All right, so in this problem, I have a to the power of x plus two to the power of x is equal to 68. So I'm gonna first start by rewriting eight as two to the power of three. So I get two to the power of three to the power of x plus two to the power of x is equal to 68. Now I'm going to rewrite two to the power of three to the power of x as two to the power of x to the power of three. So I have this plus two to the power of x is equal to 68. And I can do this because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. Now from here, I'm going to let two to the power of x equal to the variable y. So if I substitute in y for two to the power of x, I get y to the power of three plus y is equal to 68. And now I can subtract 68 on both sides. So I get y to the power of three plus y minus 68 is equal to zero. Now, to actually factor this and find the value of y, I need to first find the factors of 68. So the factors of 68 are one, two, four, 34 and 68. So now one wouldn't work because one times 68 we can't subtract those two to get y. And two wouldn't work either. The only one that would work is four, because if you divide y minus four with y to the power of three plus y minus 68, that would be a factor, that would be factorable. So now that we know that four is a proper factor, For my original equation here, y to the power of three, I'm gonna rewrite this as y to the power of three minus four y squared plus four y squared minus 16 y, which is the, which is four squared plus 17 y because negative 16 y plus 17 y is equal to y. And finally minus 68 at the end is equal to zero. Now I'm gonna factor by grouping. So these two are a group, these two are a group, and these two are a group. From y to the power of three minus four y squared, I'm gonna factor out y squared because that's the greatest common factor. So I get y squared times y minus four plus from four y squared minus 16 y, I'm gonna factor out four y. So I get four y times y minus four. And from 17 y minus 68, I'm gonna factor out 17. So I get 17 times y minus four is equal to zero. Now, if I factor out y minus four, I get y minus four times y squared plus four y plus 17 is equal to zero. And now this, is, this gives me two equations. I get y minus four is equal to zero and I get y squared plus four y plus 17 is equal to zero. So for y minus four equals zero, add four on both sides and I get y equals four. For y squared plus four y plus 17 equals zero. I can factor this by using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over two a. So in this case, a is one, b is four, and c is 17. So I get y is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of four squared, which is 16 minus four times one times 17 all over two a, so two times one. This is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 68 over two, which is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of 50, negative 52 over two. 
and this is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 52 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of 52, this can be simplified to, well, 52, that's 20, that's 13 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2, so this can be 2 root 13. So I get y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 13 times the square root of negative 1, which is simply equal to i over 2. Now, if I divide both terms by 2, I get y equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 13i. Or sorry, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 13i. So, now that we know these values of i, y, remember how we let 2 to the power of x equal to y. Meaning, I get 2 to the power of x equals 4, and this is obvious, x equals 2. So, that's one solution of x. And I also get 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2 plus the square root of 13i. And 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2 minus the square root of 13i. Well, 2 to the power of x, we can't take, we can't take the power of a positive number and make it equal a negative number. So there's no solutions for these two. And x equals 2 is my only solution to this problem. All right, so in this equation, I'm going to be solving 9 to the power of x is equal to 36. So to start, my variable in this equation is x, which is what I'm going to be solving for. And we can already tell that x is not going to be a whole number because 9 to the power of 1 is 9, and 9 to the power of 2 is 81. So we know that x is going to be somewhere in between 1 and 2. So we want to find the exact value of x. So to do that, what I'm first going to do is take the log on both sides. So I get log 9 to the power of x is equal to log 36. And the reason I used logarithms for this is because they have a special property that states that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times log a. So before, x was an exponent, and it was really, it's almost impossible to solve the equation just in the form x is. But now, we can move x to the front and make it equal to a whole number, and now it's much easier to solve for x. So now I get x times log 9 is equal to log 36. And now, obviously, we want to isolate x. So I'm going to divide both sides by log 9. So then these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to log 36 over log 9. Now, we aren't done yet because we want to find the exact value of x. So we don't want any logarithms in our solution. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite log of 36 as log of 9 times 4 because I just want to simplify log 36. And now I can use the property that states that if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So in this case, I have log 9 times 4. And we can say that a is 9 and b is 4. So this turns into log of a, which is 9, plus log of b, which is 4. And remember, I still have all of this over log 9. Now, if I have something in the form a plus b, 
over C. This is equal to A over C plus B over C. And this is just using fraction properties. So I have log 9 plus log 4 over log 9. And I'm going to rewrite this as log 9 over log 9 plus log 4 over log 9. Now, anything over itself equals 1. So log 9 and log 9 cancel out. And I get 1 plus log 4 over log 9. Now from here, I'm going to simplify this by rewriting log 4 as log of 2 squared, because 4 is equal to 2 squared. And I'm going to do the same thing to log 9. I'm going to rewrite it as log of 3 squared. So now remember that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, this is equal to b times log a, because I can move b to the front. So I'm going to be reusing this property on these two terms. So log 2 squared, I'm going to move the 2 to the front. And same with log 3 squared, I'm going to move the 2 to the front. So I get x is equal to 1 plus 2 times log 2 over 2 times log 3. And now I can cancel out these 2s. So I get x is equal to 1 plus log 2 over log 3. So now from here, log of 2 is equal to 0 0.3010, and log of 3 is equal to 0 0.4771, meaning x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.301 over 0 0.4771, which is equal to 0 0.6309. So 1 plus 0 0.6309 is 1.6309. So this is my solution.